And uh, I'd like to start off with um, a question for Hillary. Um, so you're more or less like the quintessential early adopter. I see you're wearing your Google Glasses, your Google Glass uh, Explorer, I believe. And so I wanted to know from you, what technologies are really promising in that early stage, and what is there left that needs to be done in order to really get those technologies into sort of sort of a more mainstream you know, audience? Yeah, I mean, I think, oh wow, the Mac is really on. Um, I think that um, there's a lot of really interesting wearables out there. I mean, I've, I've probably tried all of the fitness ones that are out there. I, I like the watches, but I really like the glass. I mean, to me, it's so convenient because I could share information, I could take pictures, I could share video. When I go to different experiences, like my husband and I went to Napa Valley and we went wine tasting a couple of weeks ago. I mean, it was so cool to be able to wear glass and just, you know, film the whole experience, you know, and then put it on YouTube and, you know, talk about which wines I liked and which I didn't, you know, and that type of thing. I mean, what I've really been, um, I've been talking to a lot of people in the wearable space. I have a show called Wearable On Air, and it's on YouTube, and also a Tech News Now show. And I've been interviewing CEOs of all these companies, you know, to talk about new wearables and that type of thing. And, you know, to me, I think the, the what's going to really catch on, and I know Steve's going to talk a little bit about this as well, but is, you know, when glass becomes more transparent, when there's not this piece anymore, when it's part of the glass. For me, I think that these become much more um, compelling and I really do become, I think that they're going to be mainstream right now there's a lot of technical things that they have to iron out I mean you know it's the same thing like right now we're all connected with between uh, glass or you know your pebble watch or you know even these Fitbits or whatever you've got to you know connect them with your phone or your you know or your um, your iPad or what have you, and you know, the day that you don't have to connect these any longer with your phone, I think is going to be really come to mainstream. It is, and you know, you kind of alluded to it a little bit, is the social issue, and you know, that's why the fitness works because you're you're sharing it on Facebook, you're sharing it on Twitter. I mean I've got um and I have a triathlete friend out in the crowd there. We have this um Garmin 910 XT which is a, a triathlon watch, you know, for swimming, biking and running. We wear it all the time. Or we it connects to a, a program called Training Peaks. Our coach sees exactly what we're doing so that he can measure whether or not we should run faster or, you know, bike harder or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, is the heart rate up? Is the cadence right? So, I mean, I think that, you know, and that all connects with a social environment where now we're also looking at, you know, what our friends are doing and if we should, you know, compete against them and that type of thing. So, I think that it all does connect with, you know, social and that's what makes it really interesting and exciting. Yeah, and one thing even that, about what you said that makes it even more interesting potentially is you're saying that you can have your coach sort of looking at what you're doing and determining, okay, you can make this improvement or that improvement. Can he send that information straight to the glass, like in real time, so that you can make the modification on the now, spot? Now, wouldn't that be cool? That would be awesome. But no, we, I, you know, and one of you guys out there, if you're an app developer, that probably do very, very well. <laughs>